a strike is that sometimes that sometimes equipment is just not available that there are no staff um, essentially because enough people have not been hired that we don't have uh, uh, doctors who are paid what a CBA for example has required and all of this if we can say it is a loop <laughs> it doesn't matter where you look that in order to deliver UAC in order to deliver what we're saying will roll out in the next couple of weeks there's certain brick and mortar elements that mm. don't exist mm. and so the question is can you really then deliver UHC if there is non-existence of some of these elements that are absolutely vital if there's a long line at Kenyatta for example if there is a facility somewhere in Garissa whereby you know we can't access it and somebody still has to come all the way to Nairobi to get it done can we really deliver UHC without some of these things in place Wow, thank you so much, Ndu, for that. And um, for me, I believe it's one step at a time. When I saw uh, it in Machakos with the UHC rollout, it was brilliant. It was marvelous. I think we just need to believe in ourselves as Kenyans. We need to unite uh, to deliver um, UHC. So at primary care level, what we have done is uh, conduct assessment to identify gaps. When you look at the benefit package, it is a bare minimum based on the finances, you know, uh, following the finance bill, what happened, we were given um, uh, limited resources. But we said we are not stopping there. Let us progress. Let us uh, give Kenyans a bare minimum package that they can access at primary care level and uh, other levels of care. And so I think it's one step at a time as we capacitate, we have been able to uh, 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 deliberate and we have raised it uh, even uh, to the higher levels and uh, to cancer level and uh, resources have been um, provided to ensure that medi medicines are available. We have mapped out the capacity and what we have in terms of human resource at the moment is uh, sufficient. And uh, so gradually uh, assessment will go on, capacity will go on, even as the resources um, avail. And as I told you, the facility improvement um, uh, act, as you looked at it, it's all about capacitating the facility. And this is looking at sustainable solutions, you see. So we may not be perfect at first, but let us think of it as a gradual uh, process that ultimately we are aiming to have sustainable um, uh, and uh, self-sufficient. Here's the thing though, Wazir, yes. okay? Mm. You identified the problem, even in your own statement at the beginning of this interview, that people mm. would have a matter that could have been handled at a healthcare or a dispensary, going to a level four, five, for same care, and the focus now is let's deal with preventive and primary care. Mm -hmm. And with preventive and primary care, we want to encourage people, you have a headache, go to your local health facility, mm -hmm. local dispensary. And then from there, we start the issue of now uh, graduating upwards or even coming from up and graduating down. Those facilities at the local health center need to be working mm -hmm. for this to work. That is 100% taxpayer funded, the primary health. Is it ready for 1st of November? Can we say that on the 1st of November, from the Ministry of Health, from what you've, the studies that you've conducted since time immemorial, even now with a plan for the rollout, that if somebody has a minor headache, it's an injury, they have been throwing up, a child is sick, if they go to a local dispensary, they will actually be able to be attended to and go back home. Yes, so that is what we anticipate. Currently, we have 109 out of the 350 primary care networks uh, having been uh, capacitated. And uh, yes, the products are, uh, uh, we've been having challenges on uh, health product uh, delivery. But what we look into in the next coming weeks is accessible products or medicines for people, again, a human resource. So we've been able to map and those are now the interventions that we're putting in place even as we look to rolling out um, uh, um, the SHA, the Social Health um, Authority, mm. on uh, 1st of October. And as you said, um, we need a sustainable solution, you see. Uh, the over-dependence on Treasury can be a challenge. 
Yeah, and we have learned that through the finance bill. So as the Ministry of Health, what is sustainable in terms of health service delivery? Mm. It's having that contribution routinely, you know, a good amount of money that can, uh, you know, the, the uh, Kenyans can utilize and uh, have access to affordable quality. I hear you, Aziri, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. But the contribution mm -hmm. to the social health authority, to no, social health insurance fund, mm -hmm is for the middle level care, yeah. right? Mm. And you do not want to deplete the middle care uh, care with things that should be sorted at primary care. So to make sure that SHIF is not spending money it should not be spending, primary care needs to be working. Mm. Yes. Is it working? And we are capacitating. That is actually, when you look at the acts, there's the Primary Health Care Act, and the Facility Improvement, Social Health Insurance Act, and uh, Digital Health Act. So the Primary Health Care Act has clearly articulated the roles, responsibilities, uh, and the capacity for the primary health care mm. level. Yes. And so we want to make it fruitful and have it even as a primary care network with good referral systems within the public. Because eh? True. Yes. That's the basis for my question. Because <laughs> the law provides that the Primary Health Care Act says primary health it shall be working, it shall be funded from through the National Treasury. Yes. Then there's this middle care that is the social health. And then there's a critical emergency and chronic illness fund that will talk, sort out the person with dialysis. Are these things aligned? As we head towards November is only on how many days? 60 days? 60 60 days yes. 70 days from now. On November 1st? Mm. Oh, oh yeah. it's yeah. actually 30, 30, 30, 40 days. 40 yeah. days away. Mm -hmm. So for primary care, we can assure Kenyans that yes, we have the resources available. And for emergency critical and chronic illness funds, what we can assure is the emergency, even when you look at the package, the emergency component, and we are looking to, 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 uh, on the critical aspect of the funds. Mm. Now for the social health insurance, as you well know, it depends on the contributions at hand. But now that we've been able, we'll be able to transfer the, patient, the, the clients from NHIF to SHIF, I believe that would be a good starting point. But now we need to onboard more Kenyans so that they contribute, that we can have sufficient resources for it to be mm. sustainable. Let me ask a, a practical question. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can answer it that way. If I am in Chuka Town mm. today, and we're looking at the primary level, and I go to a dispensary or I go to that, you know, level one, two, three, seeking care. What we are saying is that the rollout today will ensure that I walk into a facility with my headache or whatever it is may happen. And I get treatment and I leave that hospital or I leave that dispensary health center in Chuka without spending a dime. And I am treated and I go back home. That will happen now? No. Okay. So, yeah, those are the challenges that were there before. And uh, what we are assuring Kenyans from 1st November, that is what we're working towards. So resources have been um, released, and we believe that, um, like, uh, CAMSA will be able to distribute to the primary uh, health care level hmm. uh, resources. And uh, human resources will also be available. And as I said, it will not be a one-off we are really working to strengthen the health system in Kenya. And for the digital platform, it will be able to tell us about the capacity. What are the health products in each facility? So um, each county governor, uh, and even at national level, uh, while we are seated there, will be able to map out and say, these are red, danger, we need to bring products there. These ones are green, they are good to go, etc. And even in HR capacity, we'll be able to monitor how the nurses and the doctors, you know, how many are present. One of the challenges um, or, or, or the governors were talking about is um, at times you may have um, a doctor has been employed but has done maybe five surgeries uh, in six months and so on. So then uh, it brings challenges. But with this system, we'll be able to monitor and, and ensure that, um, you know, services are delivered and Kenyans are getting quality. Because the ultimate goal is for us to have a system that is equi I mean, it's the same as our private facility and faith-based. Mm. And so it may not be perfect, but as 
we continue with assessment as we continue we uh, uh, and strengthen the digital platform we continue with the engagements we'll improve the intergovernmental uh, relationships uh, i believe that within um a good time period mm. we should have this system ready mm. yeah so it may not be perfect at this time yeah. but we are working on it what's the thought about making sure that the system at least mm. to a certain percentage is foolproof before asking kenyans mm. to then start to use it yes so uh we have engaged the uh, data protection um uh, commission we have looked into the cyber security concerns we have had layers of, of protection uh, for each component and again for the whole digital superhighway so uh, and then the, the cyber security concerns are being addressed uh, among others so that is indeed an area that is of great focus and also borrowing uh, from the e citizen and other platforms mm. so definitely we look into um, ensuring data protection so you've come into office where certain things were happening mm. you know um the doctors had just come off a 50-day strike was it a little bit more than that mm. and just last clinical week officers, clinical 100 officers days plus. 100 days and nurses did their bit um but there's still a lot of dissatisfaction mm. around the human resource aspect of healthcare delivery mm. uh, for doctors whether it's at the county level with wh whichever level it is we just had this whole debacle with interns and whether they will be paid what is prescribed um how you deal with that human resource aspect because year in year out mm. it has been an issue doctors today are threatening that they will i believe they've given a notice they will go and strike again how do we deal with some of these issues whereby we just never seem to be able to agree and sadly do the right thing wow ultimately let me start from ultimately mm -hmm. yeah when we have um the social when we have the social health authority in place mm -hmm. what that means is um, the facility will be able to capacitate itself and gradually we believe that it should be able to pay the human resources within that facility yeah so that is the vision that uh, uh, from primary care level up to level six they should have res enough resources uh to maintain the human resource mm -hmm. that is the ultimate and the sustainable solution uh but for the human resource uh we have an act that will be coming very soon and again uh we are working on uh, the hrh uh, policy so th those all those things will be uh, well articulated to ensure that we are addressing the concerns of doctors and uh, nurses and the clinical officers basically all the cadres that are involved in uh, healthcare delivery um, so this is an upcoming policy and i think uh, i believe that we'll have a lot of uh, participation to ensure that um, um, all the concerns are covered especially for interns and also for doctors but for the doctors, I believe it has been sorted by now mm -hmm. because uh, resources were released um, even as uh, uh, we continue with them. And uh, equally, the nurses and the clinical officers, uh, we are addressing the issues and ensuring that um, uh, their concerns are addressed and the CBA is adhered to. During vetting, yeah. you pledged support for the establishment, establishment of a human resource commission. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Tell us about that. Yes. Medics have been pushing for this for a one national commission that employs them and deploys them. Mm. <laughs> do you still, after now gone into the ministry, talking to the officials there, do you still think that this is the route to go? Okay. So for our constitution, you know that it is very clear that um, health is a devolved function. So that is where we are mm. as a, a foundation. And so our work is to strengthen that intergovernmental um, relationship to ensure that um, the human resource uh, concerns are addressed at county level. But uh, I hope to again engage the governors because there are certain subspecialists like a neurosurgeon. We don't expect a neurosurgeon to sit in a in a facility the whole day. He might maybe do one surgery in three months. Yeah. Mm. So for him to uh, you know, improve his skills for him to serve more Kenyans. He, we may need him to go to multiple counties. Um, equally for those 
uh, critical but really subspecialized courses like urogynecologist and uh, uh, gynecologist among others. So there'll be deliberations on how we can have this as a national resource or a regional resource so that they can serve various counties. They are very expensive. Uh, we don't want them to do work of a, a medical officer or a clinical officer. We want them to improve their skills and be able to serve as many Kenyans as possible. So deliberations on that uh, will be ongoing at, uh, with, uh, with the governors uh, to ensure they are buy-in. Mm. Yes. Let's talk about MPOX, because now this is something that your ministry is now dealing with. There's a threat of MPOX in the region, threat of MPOX in the country, right? And we've been seeing lately, um, there's talk of, you know, the government, your ministry um, setting aside a certain amount of budget to just deal with the threat of MPOX or saying this is how much we would need to deal with MPOX. Talk about that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. So the uh, State Department of Public Health and Professional Standard um, have developed, that is a State Department a response plan. But as you know, it is critical for us, first of all, to have a response plan, mm. seeing that this is a public health emergency of international concern, of continental concern. We need to be, um, you know, to work towards having uh, a prompt response plan. And so the State Department of Public Health and Professional Standard went ahead to develop an urgent response plan. Mm. Uh, but ultimately, we, 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 we want a comprehensive plan that involves both public health and uh, me medical services because uh, of continuity of services, because of uh, co-infections with, with other, like HIV among others. We've seen it in other countries uh, um, um, in, in within Africa and beyond. And again, we need a multi-ministerial um, uh, um, approach because we have, this is a zoonotic illness, so we need vet medicine uh, in, uh, colleagues involved, mm -hmm. uh, wildlife involved, and again, we need the health security because this is a health security risk. So a comprehensive plan uh, is anticipated. So uh, the plan again, we are reviewing to ensure that it's comprehensive and consolidated and uh, ensuring that it is aligned with the budget um, um, at hand. Yes. Mm. Okay. There are some, I'm, I'm just looking at that, of course, when we're dealing with um, a threat such as that. Um, we did have... Um, um, a conversation about this with the Department of um, Standards, Professional Standards. Mm -hmm. But as we come back to, I just want to look at the system again. Mm -hmm. um, folks are registering and there's an issue at the moment that you're not able to register folks who are of a higher age, 70s and above within the system. Is that a bug that can be looked at? Yeah. I don't know if you've heard that this particular problem exists. Yes, yes. We are looking into all those concerns and that is why uh, this time is the time when we are uh, monitoring, we are having input uh, from, from uh, you know, the healthcare providers and the users of the system. So I'll give you the example of the exact problem. Okay. There are people whose ID begins with zero. Mm. Okay. They, are not, okay. they are not able to register yes, yes. and the response that the system gives is that you must go get another ID and re-register. Mm. I don't know how you can do that when you're seeking health care, but that's the, that's the bug response from the system. Mm. Yes, that's, mm. we are working on that. Mm. Whose system is this, Waziri? It is a Safaricom-led uh, consortium. Mm. Yes. So who's in the consortium? So is it Safaricom system or is it the government system? Safaricom is a, a, a government agency. No, it's not. It's a private entity with government shareholding. Yeah. So yes, there's the government component to it. So uh, Safaricom, yeah, it's a Safaricom-led uh, consortium. Yes. So mm. what, what is the role that Safaricom is playing here? So um, they have um, an MOU. Uh, part of it, I think, is uh, in terms of data connectivity. They are also supplying uh, some devices. They are helping in the development of this digital superhighway and uh, supporting in training among others and it's all about sustainability and that's uh, uh, possibly why we had uh, a safaricom identified at the, at the time when my predecessor was there mm. so uh, looking at sustainability and housing um, such uh, a system within uh, kenya so these facilities then they, they mean the gadgets that are being distributed 
the server that is holding the information? Is it Safaricom's servers and equipment or is it the ministry's equipment? Oh, that's a good question. It should be the ministry. So it's mm. coming from Safaricom, but now it will be owned by the ministry. Mm. And the people who are ho ho holding the data right now, who are mm. inputting the data, mm. like you're saying, there's a lot of coordination of inputting data and all this. Are they ministry staff or are they staff of this consortium? So now there's the system development mm -hmm. and there's data input. We are at system development. Mm. So the system is being developed by the consortium led by Safaricom. Okay. But when it comes to data input, it's our healthcare providers who will be doing that. Okay. In the, yeah, so I see. Okay. Waziri, our time is up. It's a short one, but come again soon, please. As we get closer to October, during the month of October, um, when now you're stress testing the system, and then we launch it in November, please, let's have more engagement so more people can hear and understand what they need to do. Okay, so maybe um, uh, just to close, thank you so much mm. for having me. I didn't have time to uh, talk about my vision, but I hope next time we'll talk yes. more about uh, the vision. And I believe the first and the primary is the realization of UHC. Because if all Kenyans are able to access affordable and quality care, I believe it is uh, going to be fruitful for, for us as Kenyans. Mm -hmm. And again, looking at the health infrastructure network, when we look at the um, level six hospitals, I believe that it's important that we have equitable uh, distribution so that we have our level six hospitals all over. And I really, that's, that speaks to accessible care that's because true. I think care has been centralized more in Nairobi. We have uh, five of the, of the level six in Nairobi and then one in MTRH. So how can we ensure equity so that Kenyans can have uh, access to care at uh, you know, northeastern, coast, eastern, and among others. And in this level six, we need to think about medical universities, specialized training for nurses, the doctors, you know, um, uh, training uh, of even for other cadres, mm. referral, strengthened referral systems, research, innovation, you know, There's uh, a lot. centers of excellence. So come back. <laughs> come back. We actually look at what's your plan going forward. And we'll also tell you, we had a minute, uh, uh, an interview here with a uh, uh, healthcare practitioners, and this, they said, This is our wish mm. for our new minister, awesome. Dr. Deborah Barasa, Cabinet Secretary for Health. Thank you for joining us. It's a minute past eight, time for the news.